Okay, we're going now with our third presentation, Welcome 76. Kevin oh. Rose with the Big Man Bike Entrance. <laughs> Good afternoon. I hope a bunch of you took advantage of breakfast this morning at the San Jose Sausage Fest. For our, vegan, for our vegan and vegetarian friends, I apologize we did not have a non-meat option. Uh, we are ticking along. In case you haven't heard, we are Worldcon 76. Our dates are August 16th through 20th in the McHenry Convention Center downtown San Jose. And our website is worldcon76.org, just to make us easy to find. Um, we are actively recruiting right now, that's our big deal. But we do have a rate increase coming up. On February 1st, our attending adult rate goes from 160 to 190. I will note that if you start registering now and make a partial payment, you lock in the early bird price. We do have young adult, child, and uh, active duty military first responder special rates. We are examining the options for a family rate, and we guarantee that if you buy your memberships now, and then the collective family, family rate would be less than what you've already paid, we will refund the difference, um, if that is appropriate for your family. Um, Andy has spent two years talking about our facilities in our downtown. We have lots of food. Uh, we do have a FedEx office, large office, that does hold a location two blocks away, and a UPS store two long blocks away because the grid is wider in one direction than the other. There is one item I do want to bring to your attention, and I want Dave Clark's help with that, because we've been asked about it. A very strange law was passed in California this year. The autograph memorabilia statute was expanded to anything that's signed by the maker. And we've had questions from potential dealers already. So, Dave, if you want to come up, and uh, he's too old to jump or to trip. This is uh, concerning a something that was happened this year. Um, it's called Assembly Bill 1570, Collectibles, Sale of Autograph Memorabilia. Now I do have a few, very few copies of, of this legislation with me now, but with this crowd, it shouldn't matter so much. You all have self have smartphones. <laughs> So all they have to do, uh, that's all they have to do to enter, enter to uh, And Andy is handing out cards with uh, the Microphone, side. please. Andy is in the room handing out cards with the same information if you need it. Just wave at him. So what this, do, this, what they did was they took existing legislation concerning the, the sale of autographed sports memorabilia, and they changed it and, and now they're adapting it to everything that's signed. Conceivably, you know, art, certainly books, and conceivably artwork. Uh, among the fascinating details uh, that they asked for is a certificate of authenticity with everything uh, if the item has a, has a sales value of $5 or more. Authenticity, details, certificate of authenticity, which will include whether the item is autographed in the presence of the dealer and specify the date and location of it and in the name of a witness to the autograph signing, and indicate whether the item was obtained or purchased from a third party. If so, indicate the name and address of this third party. We have shown this. Uh, that's just for that's just the simple stuff for books, and I cannot can, I cannot begin to speculate what this is going to mean for one of our art shows and our auction. I have shown this uh, legislation to John Sapienza uh, to get his opinion, and he says that yes, we're covered by it, and we are not happy. Uh, there are several. Groups and individuals have already begun to make noise about this. There is, uh, I've, been, I've been hearing stuff that uh, legislators are already looking to modify this legislation. Reportedly, the, uh, the assemblywoman who introduced it in the first place 
was surprised by the concept that this might cover books. <laughs> Otherwise, we're, we're starting. Alan Bates of Borderlands Books has already notified the NCIBA, the Northern California Independent, Independent Booksellers Association, and he is egging them on to uh, notify the ABA. I have uh, passed this along to the West Coast Director of the ASFA, and I'm hoping at this point that someone has already mentioned this to to Sefwa. And there, is Sean here? No. All right, well I've been speaking to someone who said that uh, the uh, San Diego Comic Con has already been made aware of this and they're getting angry. <laughs> Basically what we're asking for is anyone, if you have any contacts, if you know anyone with a trade organization or a publishing group, or anyone with, who would have a nice, large commercial interest in this field. Please have them start making noise and contact the state legislature for California and let them know that they would like this changed. What about Gallifrey? Yeah, actually, guys, we have to move on. Yes, you have to move on. Yes, that's right. And that's, what we, that's where we are right now. Make noise, thanks. Do you want to count that as your biggest hurdle? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would count that as our biggest hurdle right now, yes. Okay. Um, oh, there is one other thing. Besides contacting trade organizations, if you know someone in California, encourage them to contact their elected, their state elected officials. At their district office. At their district office, which means their local office. So. Uh, on the question for family membership rate, I believe you mentioned that in your presentation. Uh, did you talk about babysitting? Uh, we are investigating child care. We don't have anything to report at this point. Okay. What about labor requirements, especially as it regards decorators, forklift drivers, that sort of thing? We are a union hall. This is a facility which is used to uh, fan run events, so the union requirements are not onerous by any means. We have a long list of preferred providers. We are not limited to it but a number of them are used to working with fans and offer very good rates. So we're, we are taking references from the fans who already use vendors. I think that answers one of the next questions on the list too. Mm -hmm. um, we have a question about noticing that you haven't listed your guest of honors on the website. Um, and at some point you mentioned that you were negotiating with an agent for one of your potential guests. That fell through. And yeah, some concern that that isn't compatible with Worldcon tradition. So our guests of honor are on the website. Our website structure is being revamped this week now that the webmaster is back from his cruise. Um, there's a conversation about the timing on that as well. Uh, but um, so we, our guests of honor are currently there we go. Bob Wilkins is one of our posthumous guests, our host of honor. He was the uh, local host of horror films, late night horror films, had amazing interviews. He previewed one of the clip reels from Star Wars before it released. First time anybody saw Star Wars on television. We have Edgar Pangborn as our posthumous author guest. Pierre and Sandy Pettinger as our fan guests. Yes, they're alive. Chelsea Quinn Yarbrough is one of our author guests. She currently lives in Berkeley. And Spider Robinson is our other author guest of honor. Now, we were negotiating with a retired makeup artist in hopes that fans, uh, that he would be willing for the Worldcon model, uh, be a guest at the convention would be sufficient, but we've been informed that that is not true. So that was what we were talking about. The only way to reach some of these people is via their representatives. But we've been informed that it's not even worth asking, that he only works for appearance fees. So we are now working down our long list. We do expect to have both artists and music guests to announce later in 2017. Okay, look, you covered UPS and FedEx or America's that was all good news. What about electrical power costs in the facility or those budgeted? And there are charges for electricity in the dealer's room, and we are working those details in the contract now, so I don't have numbers to quote. What are those within expected normal range? Yes. Okay. And also, uh, internet providing, rigging, drainage, those type of things, are you stuck with? Downtown San Jose is entirely covered 
by free municipal 20 gigabit Wi-Fi, uh, including the connection center. Wired connections cost more. And I have found a few dead spots downtown, like behind the Fairmont Hotel. But for the most part, it's there and it works. What were you doing there? Yeah. <laughs> Eating a turkey burger. <laughs> Anything from the audience? Oh, and I've got another one that just was asked by somebody else, but um, party situation. What's the party hotel, room parties, that sort of thing? Uh, we have both of the attached hotels. We have Runner House in both of them. The Marriott is our host hotel for open-style fan parties. We have non-conforming use clauses in the contract, so they understand that a large number of people in a hotel room or in the hallway outside it on the party floor is expected use at our convention. We have corkage negotiated. So, and as I said, the Marriott is used to fan parties. This is where further confusion happens. Uh, and if they can cope with the furry convention, believe you, they can cope with us. <laughs> Deb, I saw you raise your hand. Yeah, I, I have one question, uh, and, it, and it deals with the issue of uh, the nature of your decorator. This time, are you going to ask that your decorator use union labor from San Jose instead of bringing it down from San Francisco and generating a strike? <laughs> the bid chair wishes to address that question. Do <laughs> <laughs> you remember the answer to that question? I don't, so go ahead. Okay, I remember the answer to this question. Um, the San Francisco Teamsters. Can you repeat the question? Okay, so the, the, the thing was about the protest by the San Francisco Teamsters in front of the San Jose Convention Center in the last uh, Worldcon. Um, I am not going to say what I think of the San Francisco Teamsters on Sunday. It's going to be recorded and go on the internet. We did not actually use San Francisco Teamsters. We used San Jose Teamsters, and the San Jose Teamsters were perfectly happy. Um, why the San Francisco Teamsters were down protesting us when our local Teamsters were happy? I'm baffled. All right, we've got a question about what's the location for Masquerade Hugo and other event events. We have a brand new 35,000 square foot grand ballroom with full pre-function space, and uh, we are planning to uh, digitally transmit to a secondary space because we've discovered people like having something like Guinan's Bar, where they can watch things on the uh, screen. Uh, and I will actually be on site this coming week. I believe I've located the service space we can use for a good masquerade green room. But the ballroom is beautiful, has built-in blackout drapes in the soffits, so we can actually seal off the room from the night lights if we want to. How many uh, people does it hold in the audience, roughly? Depends on the stage layout, so I don't have those numbers at my fingertips. And where will parties be located? Parties will be in the Marriott Hotel. We are investigating the use of suites in the Hilton for the professional and semi-closed uh, events so that we have, can spread out through both hotels. And what about the con suite? Will it also be inside the Marriott or elsewhere? It will probably be at the Marriott, yes. Okay. Anybody else with a quick question? We'll take one in the audience. If you didn't use the card, going, going. Oh. Thank you very much, Brian.